Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the STEM Digital School. This is for Natural Sciences and Technology, and my name is Onkarabe Pesetwe. Okay, guys, um, today we will be continuing from where we left off yesterday. Remember, as said, that this week we are doing revision. Okay, and guys, um, for your assessment or test, next week, Thursday, you guys will be writing on life and living. So all the topics under life and living and all the topics under meta and materials, and it will be out of 40. Okay, so just gather um, your textbooks, gather your notes as well as summaries as we go through um, today's work. Guys, also note now, please do not switch on your cameras do not switch on your videos, okay, throughout the lesson, keep them off. And if you do have any question, you can raise your hand or you can type it in the group chat, okay? So if you have a question or an answer for me, you can type it in the group chat, then I will address it, all right. And just another thing again, if I am going too, too fast, then you can just press that go slower button on the participants icon. All right, so I hope everyone is ready and we can start. Great. Okay, so guys, um, yesterday we looked at habitats, right? We looked at habitats of animals as well as plants and just a quick um, revision or review. What did we say a habitat is? What is a definition? of a habitat so you guys can raise your hand or you can type it in the group chat so then i will read it out to, to your classmates what is a habitat okay i see zoe's hand is up here's zoe hello ma'am how are you Fun, thanks in you, ma'am. I'm um, well, thanks, Zoe. So what is a habitat? Ma'am, a habitat is a place where animals or people live. All right. So in a habitat, these plants as well as animals and humans, as you just mentioned, are naturally found there. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. Beautiful. Okay, thank you very much, Zoe. I see... Um, Bramlin. Okay, thank you very much, Zoe. Bramlin has an answer for us. And Bramlin, you just need to accept on your side for the mic to unmute. All right. Okay, Bramlin. Yes, ma'am. What is a habitat? Hello? Hi, Bremen. What is a habitat? Give me the definition of a habitat. A habitat is like a habitat of an animal. Like, is it like where the animal lives? Yes. All right. So, Bremlin, a habitat is an area where we find plants as well as animals. Okay. They are naturally found there. Okay. Thank you very much, Bremlin. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, um, I think we have other hands which are up. Let's see, Toby's hand is up. Toby? Okay, your mic is not unmuting. Michaela? Hi, ma'am. How are you? I'm fine with you, ma'am. I am well, thanks. Man, a habitat is where an animal lives and it's a natural place. 
it's not um it's not made by human it's naturally naturally found where and that's a habitat all right beautiful thank you very much michaela for that wonderful answer welcome awesome okay so let us continue with today's lesson okay so tyra and darish and toby i see your hands guys um i believe you guys also wanted to give an answer for habitat right so you guys can just um, raise your hand for other questions that might come up okay so guys remember you can use the group chat to send through your answers okay so today we're looking at structure of plants as well as animals so if you guys remember that we dealt with living as well as non-living things and living things they need some sort of shelter to protect them from harsh weather conditions for example guys today is a really cold day and imagine if you were outside or having to live outside and not indoors okay so it wouldn't be um, a nice thing right so even with animals as well as plants they also need shelters all right so we're going to look at shelters for animals right so we have a natural as well as human made animal shelters and i need you guys to give me examples of natural shelters right or human made animal shelters meaning okay, uh, clan malik welcome it's no problem as long as you are in class okay so i'm going to start with the hands that i already have up i see manager let's hear Guys, remember, videos are off now. Do not switch on your videos, please. Men and Claire? Ma'am? Yeah, boy. Can I have an example of natural or human-made animal shelters? Ma'am, can I do both? You can do both. Okay. Um, a natural um, shelter is like mm -hmm. for... For ex I have one example, like a place where the wild animals live, as in in the forest or sea animals, their habitat is in the sea. Okay. Um, and what type of shelter do they have in the sea? I don't really know. It's almost like underground underground um caves for mm -hmm. the animal uh, mm, beautiful yeah and for for um human made shelters for animals mm -hmm. um for some of them it is a really it is a shocking fence around a shocking fence. Ball. yeah like mm -hmm. in the zoo or like yeah in the zoo for so, wild animals for pets uh for pets um they put them in cages in cages okay so do you have do you have a dog or a puppy um not no i used you to don't. have i used to have um pets but then okay. after we moved i had to leave them there because right, no i'm living in a complex now all right okay thank you very much for those beautiful answers so manager yeah, well. mentioned all right thank you manager mentioned caves as well as cages okay so let's hear if anyone else has a different answer okay let's try toby again toby remember your you need to accept on your side for your mic to unmute okay all right, seems like we are unsuccessful in that regard. Daresh? Hello, ma'am. How are you? I'm fine, thanks, and you? I'm well, thanks. So can you give us examples of natural as well as human-made animal shelters? One natural shelter is a tree hole. Mm -hmm. And a human is a dog scale. All right, beautiful. Thank you very much, Darish. Can I 
then another natural shelter is a nest. Mm -hmm. And another natural, um, another human made shelter is a fish tank. All right, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you very much for those answers, Daresh. Okay, so guys, as you have heard, um, Michaela and Daresh gave us examples of natural as well as a human made um, animal shelters. And here we have examples, okay. So at the top here, we have a weaver's nest. And just underneath it, we have a wasp nest. So that is natural, okay. So the weaver as well as the wasp is natural. And we have a kennel where we see the dog. So this is human made. And then we have a beehive, which is located in the tree. Okay, and that is natural. Then we also have a dam, which is human made. And here we have um, a mouse and guinea pig cage. And just right here in the middle, we have a chicken run and we have a horse stable. So these two are human made. Then the wild dog den, that is um, natural. And then we have a rock rabbit shelter and that is also natural. And then we have a rabbit hutch that is human made. And then here we have a meerkat burrow, which is natural and the kettle crawl, which is also human made shelter. Okay, so you guys just need to be able to differentiate between natural as well as human made shelters. Okay, so as we continue guys, we know that or notice that um, the different types of structures of human made shelters can either be, we can either have like a shell or a frame structures. So even animals, they are protected by either a shell or a frame structure. Okay, so we're just gonna look into detail with that. So shelters have different shapes and are made of different materials, all right? And then the shelter, the shelter structures are named for their shape and how they are made. Okay, and then the size suits the animal needs. So just to go back, all right, just to go back here, we cannot expect the dog, as you can see it guys, the dog here is in its kennel. We cannot expect the dog to live in the chicken run. Okay, so that chicken run is gonna be messed up. So the dog needs what? A safe, um, shelter here which is a shell shell structure shell structured shelter where it can live okay so we cannot expect the dog to live in the chicken run neither can we expect the chickens to live in the dog kennel all right and you guys can also see that the material used for the dog kennel is also different from the material used in the chicken run okay All right, so here we have examples of a shell or frame structures in animals. Figure two is indicating to us a tortoise shell is its shelter. As you know, guys, um, tortoise usually just hide themselves in um, when they find danger or, any, or anything like that. So they would just get into um, their shell there. And then we also have a snail, which has a soft body, and it also has or uses its shell as its shelter, okay? So the snail uses its shell as a shelter, and the tortoise also uses its shell as a shelter, all right? Okay, so um, here we also find in figure four that bats find shelters in caves. Okay, and here in figure five, it shows that a mole uses a tunnel in the ground as its shelter. Okay. Right. So moving right along, we learned that some animals make their shelters from different parts. Okay. So they join or weave the parts to make the shelter strong. And here are examples. So spiders use a frame structure for their web. Okay, so the spider web is a shelter for the spider, right? And then in the next picture here, which is indicated by figure seven, we see that a bed's nest is, is a woven frame shelter, okay? So a bed's nest is a woven frame shelter. 
Right, so guys, just important to also note that a frame structure gives support, okay? A frame structure, it gives a support. And even with the human body, we can also give examples because um, we also have a frame structure inside our body, which is the skeleton, and it also supports our bodies. All right. Okay, so let us get into designing an animal shelter. Okay, so this is a technology process. So when you design a shelter, what should you think about? When you're designing an animal shelter, what should you think about or what should, what should you keep in mind? If you are designing an animal shelter, what should you think about or what should you keep in mind? All right, so I'm just gonna take hands and hear what you guys have to say. Michaela, your hand is first on the list. Man, it is a nest, something that, um, a shelter that is big enough for the animal and right. something, something that is comfortable for the animal. Okay. And also enough food, where there is enough food and water for the animal to live. All right, beautiful. So Michaela said that you need to think about or you need to think whether the animal would be comfortable or not. You need to think um, whether the shelter that you'll be building or designing for your animal would be big enough. And you also need to check if um, in, your, in the shelter that you're building, will the animal have enough food? So that is what Michaela gave to us. All right. So let's hear what Tyron has to say. Miss, you need the right size. You mm -hmm. need to make them feel comfortable, make them feel like it's going to be safe to have their offspring. Um, and a few months ago, my mom and I made a birdhouse for the birds. Oh, beautiful. So you guys made a birdhouse for the birds. And what did you use? What materials did you use to make the birdhouse? I used plastic, some soft fabric, and mm -hmm. some woven fabric. We used the woven fat. We used the stick and some more fabric. The stick oh. was for a flag. And, and um, the woven um, fabric was to make it look natural. Inside, we put a little phrase of that woven um, fabric into it, mm -hmm. to make a little nest. Um, we used some soft, soft um, fabric to make the inside safe. We oh, for, used the, for the young some, baby. Yes. Okay. We made a hole, we put another stick there for them to stand, and a little hole roof um, over the stick. And so if it's raining, they won't be as wet as they would if there wasn't a roof. All right, beautiful. So Taryn there says that she has designed or made a bird house. And she, she said, um, if I remember correctly that when we are designing a shelter for an animal, you need to make sure that the size is big enough for the animal. And we also need to consider that the um, animal would be comfortable to also have its young babies in there. All right. So let's see what we have here. So guys, remember, if I am going too fast or you need to write down something, then just indicate for me. Okay can send me um, a message in the group chat, or you can um, just press the go slower button there by participants, all right? Okay, so when we are designing a shelter, we need to think about the purpose of the shelter. If you are creating a shelter so that, or for example, let's use Karen's example of um, the bird, for a bird house. Né? If you are designing a bird house, you need to first know, okay, I, I want birds to sleep in there or do I just want um, this shelter 
to be for feeding, okay? So if you want the birds to sleep in there, then it should obviously be big enough. It should also look natural and it should also be somewhat soft, okay? So you need to know the purpose. And then you need to know what shape and size it must be because the animals that you're creating the shelter for should be able to fit in that shelter, okay? So you cannot um, create uh, a big enough shelter that is the size of a bird for a dog because the dog will not fit into that particular shelter, all right? And then you need to consider materials. What must it be made of? We heard Tyron give us an example about the birdhouse that she built that um, they used woven fabric, right, which was soft, okay? So if your um, animal is a delicate animal, then do not use hard material, all right? Okay, okay, so here we have examples of the different materials that we can use to make um, different or designing shelters. So here in the top picture, we have wire, okay, and picture B is showing us wood planks, picture C is showing us cardboard, then picture D is showing us chicken wire, then followed by root sheets. Okay, and then we have a uh, plastic sheet, which is just indicated there by picture F. Okay, then let's see, I think we still have more. Yes, and then here we have an iron roof sheet. Then here we have wood poles. Here we have stones. We have cloth or fabric. We have thatching grass, and we also have bricks. So guys, important to note that different materials are used for different shelters. So, for example, you cannot build a house on cloth and live inside that house, okay? So, it will not be um, very much safe and it will not protect you from um, harsh weather conditions, all right? So, that is why we use bricks as well as stones to build our houses, okay? Okay, so Toby says, ma'am, I have a puppy I built... Um, a house, I believe you want to, or a shelter for my pet. All right, that is beautiful, um, Toby. You can also just share with us the type of materials that you use to build um, your shelter or the shelter for your puppy. Okay. All right, so let us look at the summary that we have for this section. So wild animals have natural shelters or make or grow shelters from their own bodies, okay? People build shelters for domestic animals using materials like wood, grass, bricks, as well as plastic. Then shelters it can be different shapes and sizes and made of different materials, all right? Then shell structures are hollow with a strong outer shell. Frame structures have loose parts joined together to make them strong. Then to make an animal shelter, you need to think about its purpose, shape, size, as well as the materials. All right. And lastly, you have to keep these things in mind when you design and draw an animal shelter. Finally, you must evaluate your design. So when we speak about evaluating our design, we need to see if it works, okay? If it's um, feasible for the plants or, I mean, for the animal that you are building it for. Okay, so Malik says in the group that, ma'am, I think if you live in a jungle, you can build a house out of wood. Yes, Malik, if you happen to find the wood in the jungle, then you can most probably just combine the wood that you find and create um, a shelter for yourself. Okay. But also, Malik, why would you be living in a jungle? <laughs> All right. Okay. Move on to the next topic. And the next topic is materials around us. So guys, just gather your notes, summaries, and open on the right page in your textbooks. 
I'm just going to give you guys a few seconds just to get um, on par with me. Okay. Um, Michaela says, ma'am, will we make a shelter for a bed? So Michaela, you guys at home can make shelters for birth and then you can email me the pictures of your shelter ne? and then I can share it in class. Okay, so you can make um, a shelter for a bird and you can email me the pictures of your shelter, then we can share it in class. Okay, so I hope everyone is ready. Okay, I see someone said go slower. Um, Carol said go slower. Carol, do you need me to go back? Do you need me to go back um, to a certain slide or something? Okay, let me hear. And Carol? Okay. Okay, so it's this slide, me, Carol. So you can just indicate for me when you are done. Okay, Carol, just indicate for me when you are done so that we can move on. Okay, Lithotra says we did do this at school. That is correct, Lithotra, you did do it. And that is why we are just revising it. Okay, Melit says, ma'am, I have a snake and I must build a house for it. Whoa, okay. Wow, Melit, a snake, wow. Okay, Um. yeah, I think you should, you really should build um, a shelter for the snake because yeah, your visitors might get um, very scared when coming to visit. All right. So uh, Mika says, "Ma'am, can you show us a can you show us pictures of animals?" Ah, oh, Mika, I'm sorry, I don't have pictures today. The only pictures that I had were were the ones that I showed you. Okay, so the pictures that I had were the ones that I showed you. Okay, Carol says. That they are done. All right, cool. Let us continue. As I said, guys, that we are looking at materials around us, né? materials around us. So this is a topic that is under matter and materials. The topic under matter and materials. All right, all right, all right. So everything around us is made up of matter, okay? Then when do we consider a material a solid? When do we consider a material a solid? When do we consider a material a solid? So remember guys, that some materials are solids, some materials are liquids, and some of them are gases. And a material will always be one of these three things, okay? And my question is, when do we consider a material a solid? So you guys can raise your hand or you can write your answer in the group chat. Guys, make sure that videos are off. Videos need to be off, okay? So I see Melinda's hand is first on the list. We have maybe somebody else who's new, who wants to give us an answer. So it's Daresh, Michaela, Zoe, as well as Meninka. Let's hear, Meninka, what do you have to say? When do we consider a material a solid? When? Yeah, boy. Um, It is when a material it gets very hard and mm -hmm. it's way too hard to break. But some solids don't have to be that hard to bake. Okay. Right. As in, Thank you. As in? Um, ma'am? Yes. Um, uh, I usually watch um, Da Vinci. Yeah, um, Da Vinci. Okay. So you, uh, I actually watched um, Super Y and solid um, ice is not very hard. Like, in case you add like a towel inside of the ice, um, the towel will it won't break that much, it'll it'll just crack until it gets to the towel. It Are is very small. That, that the ice will not break, yes. But oh, your sound there, your sound, your sound, your sound. I didn't hear what she said. Uh, 
Melinke, we heard. I'm saying that your sound um it just buffered a bit there, so we didn't hear what exactly you said. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, yes. It's like when it's solid, mm -hmm. and you take a hammer, it will break easily. But then, okay. if you put a towel, like it, they took three what do I call lunch boxes, like they're okay. very big. Right? Yes. And one and the one had a towel. Um one had this kind of sand, I forgot what it's called. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and actually um there's also a soft armor. It is very yeah, soft. Used. Yes. Like you can even bend it out. And then after like for a watermelon and you put a natural like a natural um, cloth, it's almost like a rubber cloth. Yeah, something like that. But then it's right. very hard. Yeah, okay. and if you put it on you and you and you smash your hand, and nothing will even happen. It is very strong. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much for those examples, Meninke. I hope you guys um, have followed me, what Meninke was saying. Okay, so let us go back to when is a material a solid? First, you know, a substance is in a solid form when it has a fixed shape and takes up a definite space. All right, so very much important to note that it has a fixed shape. Meninka spoke about um, a hammer, which we can also consider it as a solid. She also spoke about ice, right, which we can also consider it as a solid. All right, so here we have an example of rock. So these are boulders of rock, and these are also what we call solids, okay? And then the next question, when is a substance a liquid? How can you tell that a substance is a particular um, liquid? How can you tell that a substance is a liquid? Okay, let's see the hands that we have up. Hey, Zoe, enlighten us. Ma'am, I can't see your screen. You can't see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Whoa, um, what is happening? Just try restarting. Yeah? Try restarting or double clicking. Then maybe you will be able to see my screen. Okay. Then you can just tell me in the group chat next. Okay, Michaela, what um when is a substance a solid? Man, man it's when a, um, some when something can flow and mm -hmm. then it can be when you like pour it into a glass or something, it can take that shape. All right, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you very much, Michaela for that wonderful answer. Okay, so Michaela says when it has a definite, or rather when it takes up the space or the shape of what you are pouring it into, but when we look at a liquid in itself, it does not have a definite shape, but it takes up the shape of the container, All right? And then it takes up a definite space and it can flow. And here we have examples of liquids, milk that we drink, as well as the juice that we drink. Next question, when is a substance a gas, Darish? Hello. When, hello, when is a substance a gas? Um, when it, when it, um, flows everywhere. All right. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you very much, Daresh. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so Daresh says, a substance is a gas when it flows everywhere. So a gas does not have a definite shape, okay? And it takes up all the space available and it can flow everywhere, just as Daresh mentioned. Okay, so here we have an example of balloons which are filled up with gas.
gas and the gas that is filled up in the balloons, we call it helium gas. And that is why the balloons can float up in the air when they are filled up with this particular gas. Okay, so another important thing about gases is that we cannot always see the gas, all right? So we cannot always see the gas. Okay, um, change of state. So guys, if you remember the story of Mashudu and his ice lollies, right? Remember we read the story of Mashudu and we said that he went to go play soccer. When he came back, he found um, the ice lollies having gone, um, rather they were liquid. They were first in a solid state and then they turned into a liquid state. Okay, so Tyron, your hand is up and I have a question for you. Yes, right. ma'am. So, what is the process where a solid um, changes to a liquid? What do we call that process? It's called melting. It's called melting. Beautiful. Thank you very much for that answer, Tyron. Okay, so guys, also note that we do have what we call change of states. And we said that when a solid goes into a liquid, it melts. All right. Okay, so here we also have uh, wet clothes which are hanged in the sun. Wet clothes hanged in the sun. Okay, so Michaela, tell me here, ne? what process would be taking place in this picture? Ma'am, it's evaporation. Evaporation, beautiful, thank you very much. Okay, so Michaela says evaporation would be taking place here. So we hang wet clothes out in the dry sun. They dry as the water evaporates. Okay, so we have um, another picture here. And let's hear what Meninkle has to say. Meninkle, what process would be taking place in this particular picture? I would say condensation. Condensation, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you very much for that. And indeed, it is condensation. So condensation is when a gas um, moves to a liquid, all right? So remember the example that we made about um, using a mirror or a glass over the kettle, over the kettle steam, and yeah, condensation would have taken place and we would see water droplets forming, all right? Okay, so very much important to note is that when a solid moves to a liquid, we need to heat it, and the process is called melting. And when a liquid moves to a gas, we also need to heat it, and it is called evaporating or evaporation, right? And when a gas moves to a liquid, it needs to be cooled, okay? And that process is called condensing or condensation. And if a liquid moves to a solid, we also need to cool that liquid, and that is called freezing or solidifying. Okay, the water cycle. So guys, remember the water cycle, we also covered it now. And here is just a quick, quick show of the water cycle. Remember we said that we have evaporation, right? Or rather, before we start or before I go through um, the water cycle. Let me ask a quick question. Um, let me see which hand is first. Okay, so I have, oh, sorry, I didn't see your answer, Malik, there. So Malik was answering in terms of the evaporation picture or the picture which had a way close, and Malik said that they are drying. Okay. Um, you also have a question, ma'am. I have a question when snake wraps around your arm. What does it mean? You, Malik, I do not know what it means. Um, I play very far from snakes. <laughs> I play very far from snakes, Malik. So uh, I can't answer you on that one, but you can ask, um, you can just make a research or check on Google. Yeah? I do not know what that means, but yeah, I play very far from snakes. Okay, so Zoe's hand is up first. And let me hear. Yeah. Zoe, can you see my screen now? Are we good? Yes, ma'am. All right, beautiful. Okay, so question. What drives the water cycle? Ma'am, it's the sun. 
the sun beautiful so guys remember we said that the sun drives the water cycle so the sun would heat um, the earth right and here by the oceans we'd have or the seas would have um, water evaporating right so the water evaporates and it comes together in the clouds and condenses right so once the clouds are heavy um, it will come down, the water will come down in the form of precipitation. And if you guys remember from class, we said we have different kinds of precipitation. So Daresh, I see your hand. Just give me three types of precipitation that we have. Hello, ma'am. How are you? I'm fine. Ma'am, I couldn't hear you when you were saying the question. Oh, okay. I said, give me three types or forms of precipitation. Um, hail, Yebo. Yes. and rain. Okay, so there it says hail, snow, as well as rain. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful, Darish. Thank you very much. Welcome, ma'am. Awesome. Okay. Ma'am, it's freezing. Hail okay, and sleet. Okay, so Michaela is saying sleet, rain, and what else? Hail. Hail. All right. Thank you very much, Michaela, for your answers. All right. Beautiful. So, guys, remember we have different types of precipitation. Okay, so then guys, once uh, precipitation has uh, taken place, then the water will run off back into the streams as well as rivers and oceans and evaporation would take place again because the sun is heating up the water. Okay, so you guys need to be able to label the water cycle. All right, so in this case here, at the freezing part, we see that the precipitation is going down in the form of snow. Okay, and then the snow melts and it is it runs off to your various streams or rivers and we will have evaporation taking place again. Okay. Okay, solid materials. Solid materials is our next topic. Okay, so solid materials around us, I believe you guys can remember from the lesson that we had. And I asked you guys to tell me um, about the solid materials that are around you or in the room that you are in. Okay, so um, question, what kinds of materials are solid objects made from? What kinds of materials are solid objects made from? And Tyron, I see your hand. What was the question? Uh, the question is, what kinds of materials are solid objects made from? Um, plastic, wood, and anything else. And ma'am, I can answer that snake question. Okay. When a snake wraps around your arm, it's trying to squeeze the life out of you and then eat you. <laughs> Thank you very much for that answer, Tyron. I don't know why Malik is going near snakes, but Malik, I hope you got your answer. Ne? It's trying to squeeze the life out of you. All right. Thank you very much, Tyron. You're welcome. Awesome. All right. Okay, so some examples that we have solid or solid objects are made from is leather, glass, rubber, as well as wood. Okay, so here we have an example of a school shoe that I'm sure guys can, it's been a while since you've worn your school shoes, ne? <laughs> then we have wood, all right? And we also have glass. Okay, so all these three are solids, okay? And then, the key question is, are these materials raw or manufactured? And I cannot take hands now because we are out of time, but we know that the shoe is made out of leather, so it is manufactured, okay? okay? And then we have the wood, which is still in its raw form, and the glass here, which is made out of sand, 
and it is manufactured. So Menenza, you can type your question in the group. Um, yeah, so I see guys, um, some of you were answering, Le Clotlo was answering the precipitation question, giving us hail, snow, and mist. Malik also said water and snow. Michaela, man, when the sun evaporates, all right. Okay, beautiful. Okay, guys, uh, Malik says he's giving away his snake. Um, I don't know, any volunteers maybe? Okay, so guys, I will take us through the paper making process tomorrow, okay? So tomorrow we'll just start here by the paper making um, a process and also go through the key concepts. So guys, thank you very much for joining in today's lesson. If you do have any questions, just please do email the, the school at stemdigitalschool at africateamgeeks.co.za or you can send me an email alternatively. So guys, um, in this lesson, we also utilize the um, Siabula textbook as well as the Via Africa textbook. Remember, you can get those textbooks for yourself online, okay? Just um, download the Snaplify app or go to the Thunderbolt Kids website. Guys, have a beautiful day further. Goodbye and see you tomorrow.